What about a billion? I, th I consider that a little bit more fitting. I can't count that high. I'm gonna have to say no to that all for peace. Oh man. He looks really, really sad. I feel kind of bad. Hello, everybody. What is up? My name is Malta, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be making a video that I really feel should be on YouTube. Seeing as if you try to find any kind of career mode guide or introduction to career mode for newer players on YouTube, there's really no proper videos that just helps people get into it. Plus, the topic is especially relevant seeing as more and more people are shying away from Ultimate Team compared to previous installments of FIFA. For various reasons that you probably already know if you've played Ultimate Team for more than a few hours. Anyway, a lot of people are transitioning to the other modes on FIFA such as, you guessed it, Pro Clubs, nah though. Career mode is a little bit of more of a complex type of game mode in FIFA. Getting into it can be really difficult if you don't know how all of it works, which is where I come in. Introducing the unofficial career mode guide. So you either get to choose to be a manager or a player for your career. Uh, a lot of, most people I would say go for manager because I think it's a little bit more fun, and you know you get to control your favorite team, make their choices, all that stuff. So yeah, it's quite fun. Here you can choose if you want to have a few. You know, bonuses, if you want to get increased transfer budget or uh, global transfer network, you want to get on top of it for your uh, first season. I don't check any of these. These are make the game a little bit easier for newer players. Uh, not that I'm a pro at this. Quite bad, actually. But anyway, just you can check those, especially if you're going for a worse team. But I'm going for uh, a little bit of a better team, you'll see in a bit. So uh, after you ch checked which one you want, just go to advance. So now here you can choose your team, and personally I'm going to go with Man City as they're my favorite team. And um, they have so much money and they have great players, great young players, so they're just excellent to play with. And here on the right you can see domestic success, continental success, brand exposure, financial and youth development. So pretty much what the criticals mean is that the team really focuses on these goals and will have harder tasks for them. While if it's low or very low like Man City have for financial and youth development, the team will usually doesn't focus on it as much and the tasks are usually much easier. Now you get to choose who you want and... I think that works. Now you get to change your match difficulty, your half length, and currency. I, I prefer dollars because I'm American. And um, yeah, you can disable first transfer window. I actually don't like doing this because I like getting first few transfers in. And uh, that's also important if you have an expensive club, if they have a lot of money, because then you can buy a lot of players that you want to buy early on. So yeah. All right, we're past all the settings. Let's uh, jump right into it. Downloaded all the latest squads. We're coming to town. We're about to take over the Premier League and the entire world. Let's see how we can do it. A little bit of a loading screen here. Now here is where it gets all started. Up there is your manager rating. You want to get that as high as possible for as long as possible, and that's just pretty much based on how you're doing with the board's expectations if you're being a good manager. Here you get to advance to continue days to play through matches. You can sim matches or you can play them whichever you want. We'll go a little bit more into that a little bit later. Transfer hub, we'll go to that in a little bit as well. You can train your players, but it doesn't exactly work for older players. Like you can't really train Ronaldo and make him have like 99 shot. You can only train, you can only effectively train younger players, and it's really useful, especially if you want to have, uh, have like 16 or 17, 18, 19 year olds. You want to become like really good players. Here's your table for the prem. Here's your table for whichever league you're gonna play in. Here's the squad that you're going to be playing with. Um, you can change that if you want. I think this is quite good. I was just kidding. I like Mendy. And then you save the changes to your team sheet. Also, you can change the formation, the roles, instructions, and all these things. They can make a difference, especially if you don't have a very good team and you really need to up your team ability instead of just their ratings and how expensive they are. Because if you have a cheaper team, you might not have the best players, but if you have better tactics, you have like defensive players and attacking players doing the right thing, then you can get an advantage. Especially if you're 
choosing not to send the matches because that can give you a giant advantage. Also, if you're performing well as a manager, you're going to be invited by a few uh, different international teams to be their manager as well. So I was playing quite well. I won the Prem and I nearly won the Champions League last season in my manager career, my other one. I got invited to Brazil and Argentina, so you get to choose which one you want to join. Plus, you get certain bonuses if you do well with them, and they get to invite you again. Here's your squad hub, and you get to choose which players. You can see which players are happy, their form, all these things, if they're a prospect, if they're how often they play, pretty much. And generally, if they're playing a lot more, then they're going to be a lot more happy. However, if they're a prospect, they don't really care to play that much because they know they're not very good and they don't deserve like to be on the first team every single day. At the same time, if you have high-rated players and they don't get to play that much, they're not going to be very happy and oftentimes they're going to want to leave. See, Company's an 85, but he's not very happy just because he's not playing every match really. Anyway. He's an 85 and he thinks he should. Also, you get to loan out players, especially if they're prospects. You don't want to really use them for the team, but you don't want them to exactly leave. You can uh, add, add to transfer list or add to loan list. I prefer if they're a prospect, you should add them to loan list so you can get them back once they're better and older. Because if you add them to transfer list, they won't go for very much. So, yeah. Also, if you do have really good players but you don't put them on your first team or they don't really play that much, they're going to not be very happy. So you can pretty much put them uh, on their transfer list and they'll go for quite a bit. Say we weren't playing Torre and... Then we can add him to transfer list because he is an 82. That's not that great, but he's not really doing anything for our team. He's 34, so uh, we can add him to transfer list maybe, and he might sell for a little bit. Here are your transfers, and this is your transfer hub. Now, this is where you'll do all your transfers. So if you want to get a specific player, say I like Alexandro, you can go based on any of these, but I'll just look him up. He's 26 years old, so he's quite young. And he is an 86 overall. His value is quite high, and most of the time you're going to have to pay a lot more. Not a lot more, but you're going to have to pay a reasonable amount more than the value. As well as the fact that he's a high wage, so I don't know if we should get him. We already have some young players like Mendy for a right back position. For a left back position. That's right, we're going to get David Alba. Better choice. Once you chose what team we want, you can shortlist them, which is the only option you get once you click on them. And then you go to your transfer hub. So here you can approach to buy, approach to loan, delegate to buy, or delegate to loan so you can wait. But uh, we want to go right now. And also we're in the middle, of, as I said before, we're in the middle of the summer uh, transfer window so we can buy them right now. So if we get, if it goes through, then we can buy them immediately. This is where the negotiations will go through. So right now we're going to approach to buy so we can get him. And it says we might have to offer between 59 million to 89 million, which is quite insane uh, for a left back. But he is quite good, so it might be worth it. Now here's a little bit of a cutscene. And uh, so uh, that's me, Mr. Wanger. And nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> Once they take a seat, uh, there's actually two different uh, scenes that you have to go through. Okay, so he's talking about which deal. So uh, we're probably going to, we can try a player swap. Let's see if he wants any of our players we're not already using. Davis Silva's quite old and he's 65, so I think we might be able to sell him. Nope, he wants a left back. We don't have any expensive left backs, so we're going to offer a transfer fee. So here with Y, you can change how much. So we're going to just go for 50. Let's see how he thinks about it. He wants 78, so I don't know if he can accept that. But, uh, let's see. Just kidding, we go all in. After you've agreed terms with the uh, manager or whoever that was, I don't really know, then you can go into negotiations with Alba and his agent. So you can go there by going to negotiate or delegate. We're going to negotiate for now. 
it's pretty much if they're a better player or they're just used to playing a lot and they're playing for good teams, they're going to be want to be important or crucial. Alba's quite an important player and he's probably going to start pretty much all of our games, so we can even go with crucial, but important is going to uh, do well. But if they're a really young player, you can go for prospect or sporadic, so, you know, they play very occasionally, but they still do play. Rotation, you know, they play like... I don't know, just a few games, like one third of the games played. Important, they play like a lot of them, like two thirds or half. And crucial, they're probably going to play every single game that they're not injured. So we're going to go with important because that's what he asked for and that's what we can do. Next thing is the length of the contract. Most players are going to just want to have a longer contract, so you know. Uh, we'll just go for three years. He's probably going to reject that and go for four or five or six. See, looking for a five-year. Uh, we'll we'll see if he can go for four. That would probably do better. He's fine with it. All right, that's good. Next, you can go with a release clause. You can do this if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. I'd rather just negotiate everything. Now you discuss his salary. You don't want to make it too high, but you don't want to make it too low so that he just disregards it. So we'll let's see if he'll accept 150. So that's 5k more. Signing bonus of like three, three million. Let's see if that works. What? I did not. I I offered one fifty. Why is he rejecting? 150. Why is he saying I can't take that? I only want 145. All right, whatever. As you say, advance. Now, assume you're in the middle of it. the transfer window. You should get him in your squad. He's usually going to be the bottom of the reserves, so you just pick him up and you can place him in your team and then continue on. You can see promising players that are young, so if you want to pick up like Tom Davies, then you can. He's not being scouted, so you don't actually know like his price or all these things. So you can shortlist, but that's taking a little bit of a risk. And or you can ask someone to scout him. And scouting him isn't as much of a risk, just because you're gonna know his price. And if you shortlist him right now, and then you try to buy him, and you accidentally like go for too little, then they're just gonna totally reject you and stop negotiations. Or you might go too high, and you're just wasting a lot of money that you could have just saved if you just knew his price. So, you should probably scout them before trying to buy them automatically. For now, I think our team is good, so we're just going to go into office, and this is where you get all your emails. This is our transfer budget after just buying. This is the wage budget, so that's fine. So, we have a goal of uh, earning $224 million just from shirt sales, so that's quite easy. You just have to buy like high-profile players or popular players, because then people are going to buy the shirts of them. Emails. These are player conversations. If a player isn't playing that much or wants to say thank you for playing him, even though he shouldn't be played that much because he's like a prospect. And this is where all your old messages go. Or most of them. Sometimes they just disappear into the void. So this is the board expectations. This is where all the expectations come into play. Youth development. It's low because Man City usually doesn't, you know, get that many players from the youth. They usually buy players that are promising. So we don't have that heavy expectations. We all we have to do is sign two young players uh, with potential grade in the average or overall rating of players currently in the same position, or sign and sign one youth player to the senior team in the same season they're squ scouted. Play them in five matches, either as part of the starting eleven or coming on as sub. Quite easy as well. Brand exposure, as I said before, you got to get 224 million, at least in this case. And um, long term, you can earn 425 through media earnings, competition prize money, in three seasons. So you have three seasons to do that. You can wait off a little bit. Financial very low, just because they have so much money already. They don't really have to focus too much on you know keeping money and stuff like that. Domestic success, they're cri critical priority because they're such a big team. So in the prime, they want to win the league title, and in the FA Cup, they're going to win the cup, so they're going to be happy with you, and your manager rating is going to go up with you in both of those things. Now, continental success is also, also a critical priority, so short-term, they just want you to qualify to the Champions League. Long-term, 
they want you to within two seasons to win the Champions League, which is a little bit harder, but it's still definitely possible. Youth staff, this is going to be especially important if you're a smaller team, you don't have that much money to like buy top quality players. So here's where you go to your youth staff, and you have to hire scouts. I personally only hire the highest quality scouts because otherwise I don't want to have like an accidentally bad player on my team and waste time with them, especially seeing as I have such a good team. You can hire them, scout available, set up a scouting network, and you can choose where you want to go. Also depends on the cost, but really the cost isn't that much unless you have like a really, really small team. So, um, you can choose New Zealand. You can choose New Zealand. That's where we're going. Duration 9 months. Ah, oh, that should be good. In Canada. And Serbia. There we have our three scouts set up, and they're going to send us a few messages based on that they're setting up the network. This is the calendar, you can see what games you're going to play when. Right now we're in the summer transfer window, so there's not really any games to be played. And uh, that little thing in the top right just means that you're, you can transfer and you're in a transfer window, so you can automatically get your transfers through. And then here's when we're going to begin our season. You can also see uh, all the other teams in the other leagues, so you can see, you know, is Barcelona or Madrid doing well this season if you're going up against them in the Champions League. You also get to change your settings if you don't like it that much. Uh, if Legendary's too hard, you can go down. You can advance through here, but it takes quite a while. Also, if you click Y, you can go immediately to your email inbox, which is quite important because you can get a lot of important emails. So we can check that, and we have an email for Kevin De Bruyne, 131 million, which isn't very much, seeing as Kevin De Bruyne is like 91 rated at 26, so uh, I'll have to decline that. Actually, if we can get it to be 230 million, then maybe, maybe, maybe. Negotiate if you want to change the offer, or you can click accept offer if you like the price, but I'm just going to negotiate to see as much as I can make. Boom, 231. 211 million, you're going to be nice. Okay. What about a billion? I, th I consider that a little bit more fitting. I can't count that I'm going to have to say no to that offer. Peace. Oh man. It's really, really sad. I feel kind of bad. Anyway, let's jump into our calendar and go to the first game. Right, we sent to the first match, and once we go to the front, as you can see in the top left, our manager rating went down. What happened? Transfer offering for Raheem Sterling. I'm gonna have to say no because Raheem is quite young. Nothing really, just offers for some players that we want to keep. However, we do have a training injury. Oh, it's Benjamin Mendy. That's all right. Did of course buy Alaba, but uh, Mendy's gonna be out for about two months, so that's quite a few games. But anyway, we have Alaba, so that's all right. We also get our monthly scouting updates every month, so let's see who he has. Ooh, that's a very nice potential. He'd be at best 65, quite impressive. Didn't know your overall could possibly be 39, but I'm I, I have to say no to you. This guy at best could be a 69, this guy at best could be a 94. It looks like we'll have to pick him up, especially since this guy's judgment is 5 star, so... I was just kidding, this guy is a 29 overall. I think we can sign this guy, everyone else can be scouted further. 
So here you can sim the match or you can play the match. If you're playing a low quality team, you should probably sim it just because it's not going to be very fun just dominating a small team. Also, your sim results have nothing to do with the difficulty that you're on. You could be on beginner or, you know, world class or legendary ultimate and still have the same result. It's based on your team rating versus their team rating. And it's also based on home advantage. Home advantage is about 4%. So uh, it shouldn't give that much of an advantage, but if it's quite equal, it could really change the outcome of a game. So we'll sim it because it's got against Brighton, home Albion, so it should be quite easy. And it was. See, now our manager rating is going up. You can see that little arrow meaning that it's going up, so that's good because we won our first game of the season. And we're at the top of the prem, so... Here in the training hub, we can uh, train the players, especially young players that uh, need training, so we can train one of these guys, or him. And then you can see pretty much how it will change their value, so usually if it if their value is going to go up by the training, it probably means it's going to make a big difference on them. So you can see for all these players, they're quite good, so they're not really going to have that big of a difference. He's going to have a little bit of a difference because he's lower than them, but still not that big of a difference. He's a 62 rated actually, so he's going to have a 20% uh, addition in his value so um, quite a good choice so you can choose drills you can simulate them especially if you're doing a lot of them a lot of training then you should probably simulate them because you don't want to waste all your time so yeah you can do this every seven days so we did it today so we have to wait another seven days so um, we can continue moving forward these are both two easy games so we can just kind of skip them and go to Liverpool yes and just sim them So on this day we have uh, a press, so what we can do is speak to the press, press conference, and then uh, you can, you know, praise a player or do whatever. Wow, we draw and lost one, what luck. So if it's against a little bit of a better team like Liverpool, you can play the match, make sure you do well, and uh, yeah. That's what I'm about to do. Play a little bit of cutscene at the beginning, unlike kickoff or ultimate team. But that doesn't really change anything. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you. If it did, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, and, you know, comment what you want me to do more of. If you want to see more player career, I can show you that too. I'm not quite good at it, but uh, I definitely know how it works. Yeah, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful afternoon. Peace.